The Illustrator format is incredibly powerful and flexible. However, in order to view an Illustrator file, you need the Illustrator application to do so. It's not always feasible or logical for everyone to own Illustrator to view a file. That's why Illustrator has the capability to save to a variety of other file formats, including the one we'll discuss here, PDF. The PDF, or Portable Document Format, allows you to save your Illustrator document into a format that can be viewed on virtually any computer that has the free Adobe Reader application installed. Let's take a look. I'm beginning this video with the Badlands underscore logo dot AI file already open on my computer. And before I show you how to save a PDF, I want to point out that this particular file has multiple artboards in it. So I'm going to go to my artboards panel and you'll notice that if I double click on each one of these, we have three different ones that are different colors. And to illustrate the concept here, these are three different logos that I've come up with that I'd like to show to a client. And in order for the client to see these different versions, I'm going to save this file as a PDF. Now, to do so, it couldn't get any easier. We simply come up here to the file menu and choose Save As. Now, down here in the Format dropdown, in addition to Illustrator, as you might expect, we have a number of other valuable and useful formats that we can save to. The one we're going to choose here is Adobe PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Adobe PDF, and I'm just going to put it on my desktop. That way I have a quick way to access it. And before I hit save, I want to point out that down here at the bottom, notice that Use Artboards is checked. And because I have the All Radio button selected, it's going to export each individual artboard as a separate page in the PDF file. This is incredibly convenient because when the customer receives this file, they can simply page through the PDF and be able to see all the different logos that we've come up with. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And it's not quite that easy. We do have the Save Adobe PDF dialog that we need to contend with before we can proceed. And this dialog is actually pretty useful because it allows us to control the file size and quality of the PDF that we're going to be creating. So up here in the Adobe PDF preset dropdown, if we click on this, you'll be able to see all the different file formats, or I should say PDF presets, that we have to choose from. Now you could go with, say, smallest file size, and the concept here is that it's going to try to keep the file as small as possible but still allow them to see the contents and be able to review the document. If you were creating a document that you probably want to get printed or you want them to be able to print on their computer, you could go up to say high quality print. But I will point out that with a document like we see here, I'll just kind of move this over so we can see the logo, most of the content is vector based. And when Illustrator is saving a PDF, and you're changing these PDF presets, the quality is generally referring to the image quality. So when I say smallest file size, all of the images are going to be compressed to a lower resolution. And really the only image that's going to be inside of this document is probably going to be this drop shadow that we have applied. All of the vector data is going to be retained because the vector data is very small in file size to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and go with smallest file size. You'll notice we have a couple options here. If we click on compression, we can see exactly what smallest file size is doing. It's taken it down to 100 pixels per inch for any images that are above 150. Notice that if I change my preset to say press quality, notice that if I choose the press quality preset, that all of the images will only be downsampled to 300 pixels per inch, which is a pretty high resolution for images. So we'll go ahead and go back to the smallest file size here. You can turn on marks and bleeds if you want to. You can change the color conversion during output. Go to the advanced section. We can also control the fonts. So right now it's going to embed all the fonts in this document. And we can also control the flattener preview, which really doesn't apply to this preset here. If you wish, if you don't want just anybody to open this file, you can add a password to this document so that when somebody opens this PDF, it will require a password. So that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is click on the Save PDF button. But before I do, I'll go to the General category and click 
view PDF after saving. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Save PDF button. And what it's telling me is that the transparency blend space does not match the destination. And that's because I'm using a CMYK file. And the smallest file size is going to convert the colors to RGB. So that's fine for what we're using it for. We'll go ahead and click OK. And we have not turned on Preserve Illustrator editing capabilities. I'll show you that in a second. We'll go ahead and click OK. And once this file has been saved as a PDF, it's going to open it, in my case, in Acrobat Pro, because that's the application I have installed. But in the case of most users, it'll open up in the free Adobe Reader. We can see that we have three pages here. And if we click to go to the next page, it's going to show us each version of this logo. This makes it really easy for the customer to respond to us and say, hey, we like logo three the best. And we can go with that version. And uh, then we know which one we want to use. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let's go back to Illustrator. Because I also want to show you that when you go to File, Save As, I'm going to choose Adobe PDF again. But this time, what we may want to do is send them a final version. So if the customer did, in fact, like the third version, we can click on the Range radio button and choose to export only the third artboard, which is really, really useful. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and replace the old logo that we have here. I'll go ahead and click the Save button, replace it. And what we can do here is maybe this time we want to send them a final version. So I'm going to go with Press Quality. And in this particular preset, notice that Preserve Illustrator Editing Capabilities is turned on. And what that does is allows me to technically open this PDF document that I'm saving in Illustrator to make further edits. So I am going to view the PDF after saving. Go ahead and click Save PDF. It'll open it inside of Acrobat. And notice now we only have one page. And it's the third version, the blue logo that we had created. And just to show you this, I'll go ahead and close this file. Go back to Illustrator. And I'm going to close this file. We'll go to File Open. And if we choose this Badlands logo, we can click the Open button. And notice that this logo has now opened directly inside of Illustrator. Notice that all three artboards are in fact there, which is really interesting even though we told it to export only the third one. But really in the back end of things when the PDF is generated, it's simply hiding those other artboards. So as you can see, we can go to the artboards button and we can navigate to the different artboards here. And we're technically editing this PDF. As you can see, saving to the PDF format couldn't get any easier. In addition, it makes it easy to share your artwork with anyone who has the free Adobe Reader application installed. This enables them to see exactly what the final artwork will look like in its final form.